In the area of science and faith, there are some very explosive minds. I care about climate change because of my faith. If we believed what the Bible says, we'd be at the front of the line when it comes to asking for action on climate, rather than bringing up the back. We're gonna go deeper into our examination of whether or not climate change added to the ferocity of the hurricanes Irma and Harvey. We thought long and hard about which climate scientists to invite to talk about it. We zeroed in on Catherine Hayhoe. The headline of a New York Times profile of her was, Catherine Hayhoe, a climate explainer who stays above the storm. I love the complexity of trying to figure out how this earth works. I grew up with a dad who was a science teacher, so I grew up with the idea that science is the coolest thing that you could possibly study, and why would anybody ever dream of studying anything else? For me as a Christian, I believe that God created this amazing world that we live in. It's not where you sit for an hour on Sunday. I believe that we are called to be responsible for this planet and every living thing that lives on it that we are called to love and to care for others. So rather than science and faith being in conflict on this, I think they actually complement each other. The reason why I study climate change instead of astrophysics is because it matters to people. And I hope that in my way, I can make a small difference. Moving to Lubbock is not sure what to expect. Any climate scientist who sticks their head outside the ivory tower these days will be attacked. That is the sad reality of the world we live in. It's scary to get hate mail, to get threats, to get people saying, I know where you live and I'm watching you. Or to say, I wish you were dead. I wish your son could see your head in a basket under the guillotine well over half of that hate mail comes from people who identify as Christians, people who share my faith. Social science has showed that if we argue about data and facts and information with people who don't agree with us, often we just end up widening the divide. We need to start off by finding common ground that we can agree on, values that we share. My goal is to help people connect the dots between what's already in their hearts and the issue of a changing climate. If we care about where we get our food from, how clean our water is, whether we live in a healthy economy, how healthy the air is that we breathe, all of these things are affected by a changing climate. One of the toughest things I've ever done was going to Paris for the climate negotiation. To be there in Paris with all the countries of the world assembled there, the vast majority of whom have done almost nothing to contribute to this problem, yet are suffering the impacts today. The absolute injustice of that was almost more than I could, I could bear. Climate change disproportionately affects people who are poor and vulnerable already. This is true whether we're talking about Houston or New Orleans, or whether we're talking about Mumbai or Shanghai. Go talk to one of your brothers and sisters who is suffering right here, right now, today. Walk a mile in their shoes, look at the world through their eyes, and then tell me that climate isn't changing and that people aren't suffering. Climate change is not just a challenge. It provides an unprecedented opportunity to revolutionize the way we get our energy, the way we build our cities, even the way we live our lives. We can't give up because it's the future of the human race at stake.